to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. God bless you. Please be seated. It's my joy and honor to be here. It is an honor to serve Jesus in whatever capacity. Hallelujah. The price of every one person who hears the gospel is the blood of Jesus. And so everybody, no matter how great, no matter how small, everybody has, and let me challenge, you're a preacher here, you're a man of God, take every opportunity you have to bless God's people seriously doesn't matter whether you're talking to one person whether you're talking to the whole world the price of every one person is the blood of Jesus hallelujah yesterday we began to discuss Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 discussing about the Holy Spirit and into the whole subject of the anointing hallelujah the angel comes to mary and he brings her glad tidings and mary is happy about the news but her fear was how it was going to happen and she said how shall these things be seen that i know not a man verse 35 he says the power of the highest the power of the highest shall overshadow you so the holy ghost comes upon you and with him will come the power of the highest. Hallelujah. Please do well to get yesterday's teaching. I'm sure that they must have uploaded it on Koinonia Global or any other platform. You can get it. Listen to it again. We began our discussion essentially about the Holy Spirit. And we said that the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not some being in heaven. He is God based on the integrity of scripture theologically speaking he is believed to be the third person of the trinity and third yet does not mean lesser in power it is simply the description based on function and we said how that Jesus left us the Holy Spirit to perform essentially four assignments please do not forget let me do a quick recap assignment number one we said yesterday that the first assignment of the Holy Spirit in uh, the life of the believer, if you are to experience the Holy Spirit in unusual dimensions and to enjoy his ministry, you must realize that he's there in your life. Number one, to provide guidance. Hallelujah. And then number two, to provide direction. I told us the difference between guidance and direction. That direction focuses on the destination and the goal. Guidance focuses on the steps to get there. So you can direct someone and just say turn left, go right, and then you'll find the place. That's direction. But guidance will go with the person step by step. That the Holy Spirit provides guidance and he provides direction. Number three, that the Holy Spirit has the mandate. It is within his office to be the revealer the revealer of scripture and the revealer of the will of God it is impossible to have understanding of scripture nor of the will of God except and unless through the influence of the Holy Spirit are we together I told us yesterday that this Bible that we carry scripture is both closed and sealed remember do not forget that that is a very powerful point that the Bible you see is not just a book that is closed. It is both closed and sealed. That means for you to understand the light that comes from scripture, it must be both opened and unlocked. You can 
open the Bible physically and yet the Bible is still sealed. Are we together? So it is more than the opening of scripture for you to gain revelation. You use your own hand to open or close the Bible but sealing and unlocking the Bible is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There are many people who continue to read a sealed book. That's why it sounds like a novel. It sounds like an archaeological piece or a piece of literature and there's no life that comes from it because for them it is opened but then it is sealed he said I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls or the seals so the book must be opened and then the seals unlocked are we blessed and then finally we said that the final ministry of the Holy Spirit classically from scripture is the ministry of empowerment the ministry of empowerment the messianic prophecy found in Isaiah 61 it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me from verse 1 we read yesterday for the Lord hath anointed me hallelujah to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound then you read on it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn verse 3 says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes all of this is by the empowerment of the spirit the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified and then the Bible says in verse 4, very powerful scripture. Give us verse 4. They shall build the old wastes and they shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. And all of these possibilities will happen simply because of the anointing. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. He says, I have power by the spirit. Genuine spiritual power comes by the spirit. Not by a bottle of oil, not by a bottle of water, not by a handkerchief. Those things are mere mediums. Are we together? So by the time you carry a bottle of water or handkerchief or whatever medium and believe that just because you are holding that medium, it means you are anointed. That is just rituals that will end up not blessing you. Are we together? Yes. Everything you use to anoint must be anointed itself by the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. So we'll, we'll take a step further as we discuss the subject of the anointing. This is uh, the theme of the conference. I'll take it from there. Whenever you see a man of God who is doing extraordinary things, miracles, signs, wonders, whenever you see a life that communicates unusual possibilities please let me have your attention generally speaking every time you see extraordinary manifestations in the life of an individual say a man of God and then it extends to a businessman you know we generally credit every unusual occurrence positively so to the anointed is that true so when you see a man of God who begins to prophesy or lays hands on the sick or brings a sound exegesis of scripture. We usually know subconsciously that it is not given to that man unassisted to produce that kind of result. Are we together? There has to be an agency that has been outsourced that was not originally from that man that produced that possibility. And you are right. Very, very right. The Bible says how that when they saw Saul in the garrison of the Philistines among the prophets, one who they knew never to have been a prophet. He had never been to any school of the prophets, had not been trained by any known prophet. He only encountered prophet Samuel. And the Bible says he began to prophesy with them and they said is Saul also one of them. In the name of Jesus after this service, there are results that when they see in your life, they will know for sure that the anointing has come upon you. Amen. The Bible tells us about a man called Elisha who was a protege to Elijah. Now I hope you know 
that classically speaking, the next person who would take over the mantle of Elijah should have come from the sons of the prophets. It was an ancient culture that prophets had a school where they mentored and raised other younger prophets. And so there was already a school of the prophets, those who were being mentored by Elijah. But this gentleman who was a farmer originally, and the Bible says because of service and passion, he poured water upon the hands of Elijah. He followed him, began to follow him from place to place. Finally, Elijah is about to be taken up. And then he says, ask very quickly, I'm about leaving. And Elisha says, I desire a double portion of your spirit. Elijah replies and says, you have asked a very hard thing. However, if you can see me as I am taken. Is that true? And then the Bible tells us that the angels of the Lord came, the fire came and chariots of horses in a whirlwind and took up Elijah bodily. And he cried, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And that mantle fell upon him. How did they know that the mantle had fallen upon him? He went to the same river. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he struck and the river parted hither and thither. And the sons of the prophet on seeing that, they said, surely the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. That means it can be known that something has come upon you which was not there initially. There are evidences that show that you are anointed. Anointing is not just something you say, I am anointed. No, it's like saying I am pregnant. We may suspect for a few months, or I don't know, for some women, they have a very supernatural body and you will not know for a long time. But I mean, you can't be nine months pregnant under normal circumstances and we will not know. The changes in your life, is that true? Your physiology and everything eventually will reveal that you are carrying a baby. Is that true? So it's impossible to really say you are anointed and then you would not know. Remember once upon a time, the disciples of Jesus, they knew they were not anointed. When Jesus went up the Mount of Transfiguration, there was one epileptic patient. Remember the story? They tried and tried to pray for that gentleman and nothing happened. They were disappointed. When Jesus came down, the Bible says he rebuked a deaf and a dumb spirit. And he left him and the disciples came. They were frustrated. And they said, why couldn't we cast out this spirit? And Jesus began to give them the solution. But then you read later on in scripture that the same Peter and John, they went to pray at the hour of prayer. Is that true? And they saw a man who was lying at Gate Beautiful. He had been there a long time. And he desired arms. He was not even designed the, the miraculous. Just money as usual. And then Peter told him, look on us. And he looked at them, the Bible says, expecting to receive something. And then Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have. You can know what you have. If you are not sure, you don't have it. Hallelujah. You can know that you are anointed. You can know that the grace has come upon your life and you can know what grace has come it's not going to be an extensive discussion on the anointing this afternoon but then just for your understanding i hope you know that just because you have the anointing it does not mean every problem will be solved uh -uh. the anointing works departmentally that means when you have the anointing for favor it does not bring healing no are we together now yes the anointing works like the rooms in a house please look up i need your understanding here if you get into a house how many of you know that an average house has a number of rooms has the rest room the living room a few bedrooms is that true stores and the rest now every one of those rooms are important but they will not replace another if your house has only the kitchen, then you will only enjoy it for as long as you are hungry. If you need to use the restroom, that house will not help you again because you need another kind of room. That's how the anointing is. So there are many people who say, I am anointed, but they do not know that they only have a dimension of the anointing. The anointing is tailored towards achieving something exact. So if you have the anointing that makes for favor, 
you will find out that people are coming, testimonies are happening, ease is coming to your life. But you can be sick and you can even die. Yet you are anointed. If you have the anointing to heal the sick, you will be surprised that extraordinary manifestations are happening in your life. But you will still be broke. You will still be suffering as though you are not anointed. Are we together? Yeah. That is the reason why when God anoints you, he still anoints you again. Because the anointing is in levels and the anointing is in dimensions. Dimensions mean the healing anointing, the anointing for the prophetic, the anointing for breakthrough. Dimensions or levels mean you can have more of the same kind of anointing. Two of us can carry the healing anointing, but our results will not be the same. Based on the level, he measured a thousand cubits. Remember, it was the same river, but the effect was different. If someone is understanding me, say amen. amen. Let's define the anointing. What is the anointing? Or what is the power of God? You hear that word anointing, anointing, anointing. We say it all the time. An anointed man of God, an anointed church. What is the anointing? The word anoint generally means to smear with oil. Was an ancient description on how the power of God comes upon people through oil. But the anointing has nothing essentially to do with oil or a dove or a handkerchief or water or any of these mediums of expression. Write this down please. The anointing is God's ability. It's important to understand who owns it. Because man is only a steward of the anointing, not an owner. The anointing is God's ability at work in a human or material vessel. The anointing, if you're outside, please make sure you're writing to participate very carefully. God's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results. I'll take it one more time. The anointing is God's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results. Very powerful definition. So when we talk about the anointing, we talk of a supernatural ability and engracing from God that can come upon a human vessel and can also come upon a material vessel. Immediately you see that the anointing is not just limited to humans. A handkerchief can carry the power of God. A bottle of oil can carry the power of God. Sadly, it's been idolized today and abused in the church. However, within the boundary of balance and doctrine, mediums can and do carry the anointing. If you're with me, say amen. amen. God designed this kingdom such that you are not allowed to do anything that brings glory to God without him empowering you. You find that in the Old Testament. You find that in the life of Jesus. You even find that in the life of the early church. They were not allowed to accomplish or do any kind of supernatural thing without an encounter with God. If you were Moses, you needed that rod. Otherwise, you would not be able to stand before Pharaoh and you would not be able to stand before the Red Sea. Hallelujah. Yes. There will always be an engracing upon an individual. Jesus, who was the word incarnate, when he came in the flesh, the Bible tells us that for about a period of 30 years, he would not start his ministry. He was learning in the temple right from age 12. And for 18 solid years, the Bible is silent about Jesus. The last thing we knew was that he was learning under scribes and Pharisees. And the next time we see Jesus show up, he's 30 years. And he's coming to the Jordan to be baptized of John. Are we still Bible students? And the Bible says, when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. He was afraid to baptize Jesus because he had seen prophetically that this was the Lamb of God. And he said, I am not worthy to even untie the latchet of your shoes. And Jesus said, suffer it to be so. 
that all scriptures will be fulfilled and then John dips Jesus in the Jordan and brings him out and your Bible says and the heavens were open is that true and then that the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove and then a voice spoke from heaven this is my beloved son hallelujah and then Jesus was driven of the spirit to go to the wilderness notice he was full of the spirit but the Bible does not mention power he goes to the Jordan to the wilderness fasts for 40 days is tempted of the devil overcomes Satan through the authority of scripture and then the Bible says he returned in the power of the spirit and the next thing we hear about Jesus is exploits after exploits you read the summary of that in Mark chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. The book of Mark starts immediately. It doesn't even tell us anything about, you know, Jesus Christ. It doesn't go through that detail that we find in Matthew, especially, and in Luke. It just goes straight to the exploits of Jesus. Healing the sick, casting out devils, doing all kinds of things. He went, the Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 4. When you read from verse 16 down to 19 that Jesus entered the temple one time and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah to read. And when he held it, he began to read the messianic prophecy that spoke about him. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. When he finished reading it, the Bible says he closed it and all eyes were fastened to him. And he said, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears or in your sight. He sees a man with a withered hand in the congregation and tells him stretch forth your hand and that man stretched forth his hand and immediately the man was healed the anointing God's ability at work in a human vessel God's ability at work in a material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results I made a statement yesterday I want to make reference to again remember I said yesterday that every human unassisted has a limit of results that you can produce. There is a kind of results when you see spiritually, career-wise, financially, supernaturally. The moment you see such results, it tells you that the realm of the spirit has come to assist that individual. Whether it is demonic in origin or of God. There are results when you see, it tells you immediately that the person who is working that result is not alone. Hallelujah. How do you look at someone who has gone through all kinds of troubles in his life and then you tell him by this time tomorrow and then the person leaves and someone just calls him and says, where have you been? I've been in Abuja. Come, 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 come. The Lord put it in my spirit to transfer a millionaire. Do you have a house? Does that look normal to you? No. No. Human beings are not that kind, unassisted. There has to be an agency that compels someone to remember you in such a wicked world. Are we together? Or a woman who medically they say maybe she's lost her womb or something then you hear that she's carrying triplets Mary said how shall these things be I understand the normal sequence of things I have not met with my husband yet how shall it be someone is here asking how shall it be how shall these things be is it true that from this Abuja God will lift me with no father and no mother is it really true that in spite of the fact that I do not have a job, by the end of this year I will be in my own house? How shall it be? Let me tell you this. You know it is God talking to you when your power cannot make what he says come to pass. One of the ways you can know it is God speaking. God talks to you like he's talking to himself because he knows that what he's saying will depend on his power, not your power. God can look at a woman selling something by the roadside and says, Mama, you are going to train five children in a private university. Is it selling yam or egg by the road that will pay that? No. By the time he's speaking, 
He has already positioned the destiny helpers who will give your children scholarship. Do you believe what I'm saying? I hope you think you don't you don't think I'm just motivating you or talking a preacher's talk. No. This is how he works. So the next time you will see anyone at all, including the person speaking to you, walking in a realm and a dimension that is inexplainable by the wisdom of men, it immediately tells you God has come to assist that man. There are results that men cannot produce. How does a man stretch his hand towards a sick person and does the work of a doctor who has studied medicine for 15, 20 years as a consultant without opening the person up, without diagnosing this, without... Look at the laborious work that professionals have to go through to diagnose a sick patient and then identify which of the kinds of cancers or which of the kinds of troubles and then in a moment no, men cannot do that you will begin to produce extraordinary results in the name of Jesus the son of the living God extraordinary results listen, when it is time to pray today I want you to not just pray for yourself bring all your family members prophetically into this service and pray. There are some of you, the results your children are producing is too ordinary. They will suffer if they keep going that way. The world has become a cruel place. There is no room for ordinary living again. You are either diabolic, commanding results from the realm of the spirit demonically, or you are truly in line with the anointing producing extraordinary results living an average life will only end you in penury you will be angry you will be jealous you will be you hallelujah there is a grace for favor that can come upon an individual that someone can look at you and say i don't like you but i don't know why i put your name for promotion now that one is not normal again This is true. Just because you have not experienced it does not mean it does not happen. It has not happened to you, but it does not mean it is not happening. There are people living in that reality every day. My assignment this afternoon is to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit and truly release something upon your life and release something upon your destiny. Something you did not come for service with in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. You can know the presence of the anointing in your life and what kind of anointing by the testimonies that recycle in your life. The testimonies and the physical results in your life are attestations of the kind of grace that is on you. When the grace for health and wholeness is upon you, you will find out that in spite of all your careless living, not eating and eating randomly, you are still standing strong. That is not normal. But financially, so you know the areas where the anointing is not working by the troubles that remain. While I'm speaking to you now, start looking at every aspect of your life. Where in my life is not working? That is the area that is in need of the anointing. So that when God begins to release that grace, you don't just shout amen at random and live back into pain. Hallelujah. When it has to do with intelligence, even in, within the NIS, they know that God has granted me intelligence. So that grace is working. But every time good things are about to happen, I am always forgotten. It's not just a demonic issue. Is that the grace that makes for remembrance. Do you not know that in the realm of the spirit there is something called the book of remembrance? Mordecai helped the king save his life. Without Mordecai, the king would not even live to marry Esther. And yet he ignored Mordecai. But that night, the Bible says the king could not sleep. When that grace comes upon you, you will be in your house minding your business while God is waking your destiny helpers and saying 10 years ago this person helped you have you blessed him or you don't believe this happens
Why do we need the anointing in our lives? Let me give you two reasons. There are two basic scriptural reasons why the believer needs to be empowered. Two basic scriptural reasons. Number one, we need the anointing so that we can subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and fight against the purposes of God. Never forget this. I'll take it again. The first reason, the first scriptural reason why we need the anointing in our lives is so that we can have the empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness that fight our destinies and that fight the purposes of God. NIS, do you know that God has a plan for this service? And do you know Satan is aware of that plan too? And do you know that if not resisted, Satan will fight tooth and nail to see that God's divine destiny for you, as far as your work in NIS is concerned, does not come to pass. But that is the assignment of the anointing. The anointing is the agency that enforces compliance. It ensures that the speakings of God comes to pass in spite of the devil. Psalm 66 verse 3 Say unto God How terrible art thou in thy works It says through the greatness of thy power Thine enemies shall submit themselves to thee It takes more than grammar It takes more than human connections It will take power to keep the devil at bay Apostle but you see In this commission I'm a sincere person but I'm always being victimized. I hope that I'll be able to talk with a few people so they can help me. No, sir. In this kingdom, the language that the realm of the spirit understands is power. Someone shout power. power. Let the devil hear you. Power. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power. As hard as a metal is, fire does not run away from it. When you put that metal, the fire may look weak. You can't hold it, but let the metal rest there. And as long as it rests, the fire does not change. Something begins to happen to that metal until the metal becomes like liquid. He makes his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire. So when the devil drops anything upon you, you are not the one who is changing sooner that situation begins to squeeze until it gives way if you believe me say amen, amen. say amen again amen. we need the anointing to subdue powers let me tell you the truth whether you believe it or not whether you agree or not there are powers territorial there are powers by bloodline there are powers by reason of you being on the side of Christ there are powers by reason of what you are doing. There are powers by reason of your calling that fight you. It takes power to keep them at bay. Apostle, I've been delivered from every cause in my family. Congratulations. What of the attack that follows your call? What of the attack that follows your being a believer? Do you not know the day you declare the lordship of Jesus, you have drawn a line in the realm of the spirit? There are many people fighting battles they do not understand. Who did I offend? You gave your life to Jesus. It was not only us that saw you coming to the altar call. The realm of the spirit and the altars that tied your loved ones also saw you declaring your all. And they said, so you want to break out of this? Alright, so be it. When Jesus was born as a baby, an attack started immediately. Two years and below, many children died because a special child was born. It has, it's not, you are not the first. As soon as Joseph got to Egypt, that would be the place of his prophetic destiny. Immediately, Satan began to program a woman who came and put him in trouble. And they did not know that the wisdom of God was playing out through that attack. Until he finally became a prime minister. Please, if you are being rejecting empowerment, 
because you think this thing is just for Pentecostals or just for men of God, preachers, missionaries, apostles, pastors. No, you will you will live in a if you will you will allow the devil defeat you in this end time. You need genuine spiritual power. When I say power, I'm not talking of falling down, standing up. The force that compels compliance. Satan is stubborn by nature. The first time God spoke, Satan came to man and said, did God say? When he came to Jesus, he said, are you really the son of God? He will come to you. Are you really blessed? Is it really true that you are free from that yoke? You are not the one who is supposed to answer him. That is the ministry of the anointing. The anointing has been mandated to answer the stubbornness of Satan. That every time Satan says no, your children will not become great. Your stories and your discussions will not help. It takes the anointing to answer him. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustains me but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head we need the anointing to subdue the forces that fight against our destinies. Fight against the purposes of God over our life. So you are the first who will rise from this family and wipe their tears. So you are the first who will rise and stop this. And the devil tries to attack. But by the power of the Lord, you will resist and you will prevail. Number two. Why do we need the power of God? Why do we need the anointing? The second biblical reason why we need the anointing is so that we can fulfill our God-given assignments. So that we can fulfill our God-given assignments and advance the purposes of the kingdom. Please write. So that we can fulfill our God-given assignments. Everyone has a God-given assignment. But it takes power to fulfill that assignment. Jesus himself spoke to the disciples and said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. Tarry. Tarry. That means do not be in a rush to move. I know you have zeal. I know you want to do everything in a hurry. But tarry until you are endued with power from on high so that we can fulfill our God given assignments or God given destinies and then advance the purposes of the kingdom Jesus himself said I will build my church and he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it that means the greatest resistance to the advancement of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is called the gates of hell Satan and all his arsenals and the schemings using men using systems to fight men is someone learning so we need the anointing it is a risk to try to take on this destiny adventure just with the knowledge of where you are going and without the empowerment to get there. It will be the same thing as knowing, for instance, that you are supposed to go to say, um, let's say, one of the, the parastatals here in Abuja to drive and go down there. Maybe somewhere in Jabi or in Wuse. And then you have a car, beautiful car, but there is no fuel. How in the world do you intend to get there? The beauty of the car does not become fuel. 
no matter how wonderful the car is it will need that fuel for many of you you have been keeping and admiring beautiful cars that cannot move you anywhere because you have gotten the vision which is the car but the anointing that empowers that car it can run but it is not moving hallelujah so we need the anointing you need the anointing you need empowerment most of us have bottles of oils in our house but we do not have the anointing because i had i told you earlier on the power is not in the oil listen carefully the power is not i pray for oils and all of that so i'm not i'm not demeaning these things but i'm saying primarily the custodian of the anointing the administration of the power of god resides within the office of the holy spirit acts chapter 1 and verse 8 let's begin to tie up because i want us to pray and this afternoon there will be an impartation in fact it is the same oil that we are going to use if if we have it do we have that oil please we can bring it and just keep it here let it just soak in this glory because something must land upon your head this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ but you shall receive power that means you can reject it anything the Bible says you shall receive you also can reject it sadly many have rejected the power of God to their peril you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and that this power will make you to become witnesses to me both in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth it takes power to be an effective witness hallelujah please I like you to rest once and for all in this understanding that you need power there are people here who are in ministry you need power not billboards not posters not a social media platform uh -uh. all those things are subjective without the power of God you are only wasting your time believe me you are a businessman more than the, the acumen of economics remember that because you are in Christ there is an extra resistance Satan himself so that you don't see someone who you say well this guy is not a Christian and he's doing well the question is does Satan fight himself no many of us here are business people and it looks like nothing is working how about your finances as soon as some areas come or some money comes some profit from business mysterious sicknesses one stubborn child goes to do something and you hear that they are calling you in the police station and you have to now carry a sizable portion of that money you almost want to look at the child and kill him and not know what to do with him for being stubborn and bringing this kind of wastage and before you know it the entire money is gone it is demonic you need the power of God how about disfavor how about shame how about reproach how does someone just sit down and hate you I hope you know it's not normal I don't know what it is about you but I just hate you and for as long as you are in this office you will not rise the person who is speaking may just be speaking humanly but believe me there is an empowerment making that person have that kind of hatred So what aspect of your life right now are you lacking the anointing? You know by the results you do not have. Please look up. For some of you, eh, you love the Lord sincerely but that grace for prayer and supplication is not there. When you sit down to pray, even if you sleep for 8 hours, as soon as you say in Jesus name, you will wake up 3 hours later on. Because the devil knows that for as long as it does something to your prayer life, you've tried putting your legs in water like you are writing exams, you've tried lying down on the bed, even while you are standing, you will still sleep. It's an attack. There are others, the grace that opens up scripture. You read everything and you cannot understand. 
when you hear people talk it's as if it's not the same bible you are reading something is wrong how about favor i'm listing this area so that you will know the one that concerns you there are many of us easy things become very difficult because the empowerment is not there you have been building a house since 2000 i'm not mocking you i hope you understand i'm challenging you a three bedroom flat for 10 years has not finished Papa. that is not the way God works there are some of you in a whole day trouble must come and meet you whether you meet it or not you will make mistake and call the wrong number and they will insult you or something will happen you are driving home you will hit the, the, the car of, of a, a policeman or a military man or an angry person when they want to steal somewhere just when you are entering the shop that's when the hoodlums come so it, this, there has to be so, it is an atmosphere you are carrying did Jonah not enter a boat and because of the atmosphere he was carrying people lost money they lost things let me tell you the truth it is this negative atmosphere that many people carry that's why sometimes prophets in not discerning accurately they will look and say this person you carry a bad spirit or you are a witch what they are trying to say is there is a climate you are carrying that is causing loss and pain to others it's only that sadly for many of them because they are not sound in doctrine the interpretation of their perception is not accurate but that's what they are trying to say there are some of you friends have run away from you because anybody who comes close to you a business that is already working just because they called you and said rejoice tomorrow we are going to celebrate the business goes down it's an atmosphere he said thou anointest my head with oil listen this afternoon when we begin to pray you are going to pray and say lord change this atmosphere i'm tired of this negative thing good people keep living your life because they have discerned that there is something you carry they employ you and the company goes down because you are there the power of the highest shall overshadow you is someone learning now very quickly how do you receive the anointing How do you receive the anointing? I'll give us two keys for this service and then we'll pray. Ah, someone's life is changing in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone's life is changing. Number one, pay attention now. The first key or the first platform, the first way we receive the anointing is directly from God through encounters. Please write. Directly from God through encounters. Directly from God through encounters. Acts chapter 10 and verse 36. The first five words. Acts chapter what is that? 38, my apologies. Acts 10, 38, not 36. Please read for me the first four words as loud as you can. Ready? One to read. One more time. Who anointed Jesus? It tells you immediately that number one, Jesus was anointed. Even Jesus had to be anointed. And it tells you who anointed him. And when you read further, it tells you what he was anointed with. The Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. God can anoint men through encounters. Solomon received that grace for wisdom and an understanding heart through a direct encounter with the God of the Bible. The Lord asked him to make a request and he did make that request and it pleased the Lord 
that he requested for an understanding heart and not more wealth or the life of his enemies. God gave him an understanding heart like no king had ever had. And alongside that, he gave him riches, wealth, and honor. He woke up in the morning and found out that a grace had come upon his life. You can receive directly from God through encounters. Number two, how do I receive the anointing? The second way, and that is the more general way that scripture allows for receiving the anointing is through impartation from careers of the anointing. Through impartation from careers of the anointing. Not just impartation from anybody. Not just impartation from Christians. Impartation from careers of the anointing. Impartation from careers of the anointing. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7, Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi and he said, even as it is meet for me to think of you all, he said, because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. The last sentence reads, ye are all partakers of my grace. How many of you? All. So it is possible to be a partaker of the grace upon a man through impartation. Ye are all partakers of my grace. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. Paul speaking again. For I long to see you, he says, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. I long to see you. I desire our contact. I desire to come to you so that I may impart upon you something that helps you to be established. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 27 from verse 18 down to 20. Numbers 27, 18 to 20. Please look up. Write it and please look up. I want you to see this scripture. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit. He already had the spirit. He said, Lay your hands upon him. Reading to 18. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. I love 20. Thou shalt take some of your honor. Put some of your honor upon him. I will always pause to comment on this scripture. That honor is transferable. You can respect yourself. But you cannot honor yourself. Honor is a grace. The assignment of honor is to make men pay attention to you. And value you. If that grace for honor is not upon you. No matter how righteous, how holy, how sincere. Nobody will listen to you. Believe me. Even if you have what to say. Many of us are great people who have something to say. Intellectually, spiritually, financially. But that mantle of honor is not on your life. Nobody seems to pay attention to you. Please leave that scripture for us. Thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him. Why? That the congregation of the children may be obedient. Loyalty. It's not the issue of political maneuver. There is a grace that can come upon you. Do you think that, um, I don't like to use the word celebrity because believers are not called to be celebrities. We are called to be ambassadors. However, being a true ambassador will require influence. The world calls people who have influence celebrities. Are we together? The difference between a celebrity and an ambassador is purpose. Both of them have influence. But a celebrity has influence without purpose no assignment to it while an ambassador has influence that is connected to purpose do we understand but for the sake of explanation let me use that word do you think that it is normal to have people across a region or a nation or regions suddenly like an individual and become loyal and follow that person 
not just on social media, but you call on nations and they hear you. Abba, you are not children. There is a grace. If that grace is not upon you, no matter how old, how qualified, how rich, nobody will hear you. There is a grace for honor and it will come on someone this afternoon. When that grace comes upon you like Gideon, you will sound a trumpet and 32,000 people will come and gather and say, you called us. What do you want to be done? This is the kind of grace politicians should desire instead of many of this nonsense they keep doing around. You see that? But believe me, when you call and men answer, it was more than your voice that called them. It was the grace for honor that called. Parents, if you don't have the grace for honor, your children will disrespect you no matter how no matter how nice you can try every disciplinary action, it will still not work. The grace for honor. Are we together? Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. How to receive the anointing. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Okay, thank you. Just, just keep it somewhere in front here. Nothing superstitious, just so that it can just soak in the glory, that's all. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. Why would the Bible tell you the dimension of the spirit that came on him? Because he already had the spirit, but he did not have wisdom. And the Bible says, when Moses laid hands on him, among the many dimensions of the spirit that rested upon him was the spirit of wisdom. You know that the Holy Spirit operates dimensionally. Remember Isaiah 11? When you read verse 2. That, that root from the root of Jesse. That branch that comes out. And then the Bible tells us what we call the seven spirits of God. Or the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit. And you see that there are seven but the operation is into four. Number one, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of dominion. Number two, the spirit of wisdom and understanding number three the spirit of counsel and might number four the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord seven spirits but they are channeled into four just like the four rivers that came out of eden what is the key to receiving from god the key to receiving directly from God is your hunger for God. Write it down, please. The key to receiving directly from God is your hunger for God and your depth of consecration. Your hunger for God and your depth of consecration. Your hunger for God and your depth of consecration. Blessed are the pure in heart, the Bible says, for they shall see God. What is the key? Please look up. What is the key to receiving from a vessel who is a carrier of that anointing? Number one, honor. Number two, service. You are not entitled to receiving any impartation from a genuine carrier of that grace until you practice honor and until you practice service. When you read 2 Kings chapter 3 from verse 9 to 11, 2 Kings chapter 3 from verse 9 to 11, the Bible himself testifies that just read it for the sake of time. It says it describes Elisha as the one who poured water on the hands of Elijah. That is service. He did not just seek Elijah to receive power. He was genuinely, genuinely concerned about serving him. Listen, let me tell you the truth. If God has given you an opportunity to serve in this house, whether at a national level, as an ESCO, or at a state or regional level, I want you to serve the Lord within the time allotted with integrity and truth. Knowing 
that service is the ladder that promotes men to awesome levels of the anointing. You may have heard me say it in my teachings. I have profound respect for people who serve God and serve me because I know the power of service. You can serve your way into extraordinary levels of the anointing. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? You can serve your way. The Bible is speaking. Jesus himself was speaking. He said, He that gives a prophet a cup of water, he says, shall receive a prophet's reward. In fact, one synoptic account says, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward that means when god calls you and anoints you listen carefully there are rewards that come with your grace and at the instance of honor honor is the key that makes for access now sadly i must commend sadly that we men of God have taken advantage of these scriptures and we have twisted it and created servitude out of people. We've turned people into slaves with this whole concept of, you know, prophet, man of God. And um, it's sad for the imbalances. However, let me tell you, the reason why very few people receive from those who are anointed is because of dishonor. Our world in a strange way seems to have an affinity and an obsession for dishonor. We trivialize people's sacrifices and make it look as if what is there, you are just lucky. For instance, you can see someone rising in this service. NIS, the person came as an ordinary person and there has not been any promotion where the person has been exempted. There is a grace there. You can't trivialize and say you are just lucky. Every time you trivialize people's sacrifices and the investment of God's grace upon them. You close the door to receiving that grace. It's why many children do not receive what is on their parents. I would always give this example. If you can get my teaching on honor, please do. The law of honor or any teaching at all. Hallelujah. You will easily find that online. I believe that among the many things God has granted me the grace to do is to help the body understand what we have been missing through this honor. Honor is powerful. It can open you up to untold realms of grace. There are many people today who are poor because they think every wealthy person is corrupt. They see someone who came to this city for instance, maybe with 100 naira or 1000 and within one year, two years, three years, God has blessed them and increased them like Abraham. Now there are some who may have followed wrong ways but there are people who with the dignity of kingdom integrity have mastered the ways of the spirit and have been lifted thus. And many people will just look at them and say these guys don't mind these people. And yet the person who is complaining is broke and poor and in need and will not learn. Every time you criticize a grace you close the door for receiving that grace. There are people who criticize the miraculous and yet they want to walk in the miraculous. They criticize the prophetic. Now, I've told you already, I know that there are imbalances in these things. There are people who have unfortunately delved into extra biblical practices. I know that. But within the boundary of doctrine and scripture, no. Have regard not just for God and his anointing, but for the vessels who have paid the price to carry it. Otherwise, you would not have it. Believe me when I tell you that. Even though Mary was the mother of Jesus, she had to go and join the queue in the upper room to remain there with humility to receive the Holy Ghost. Yet it was the Holy Ghost who got her pregnant. And you think she would have bragged and said, look, before all of you came, the Holy Ghost and the Word both dwelt in me. Yet she had to humble herself. Otherwise, she never would have received the Spirit. She humbled herself and listened to Peter I hope you know that when Jesus came because Peter, I mean Peter was older than Jesus but come on he could not have been as old as Mary are we together now? 
how does the mother of Jesus who carried the word for nine months you know what it means for the word to be in your womb empowered by the Holy Ghost a visitation from angels those are the credentials that would have made her a leader over the 120 but she humbled herself and was listening to Peter and saying yes sir and when the Holy Ghost came he came on her too there are many people who use the bias of age gender human experience educational qualification to mean just because you are doing well in the secular every time spiritual things come you just pocket your hand and say is there anything I can receive no it is a wrong approach you don't receive that way for you to receive in the spirit there is a law the Bible says and without controversy without all contradiction it says the lesser is blessed of the greater the lesser there does not mean the person who is low it means the person who is in need of that grace are we together physics teaches us that there cannot be a flow until there is a potential difference is that true there cannot be a flow from point A to point B when they are at the same height there has to be a gradient there has to be a potential difference there are many proud people who cannot receive the anointing because they feel after all what is there I am also born again I love the Lord and they are suffering cheap battles become something that is so difficult no favor no grace no lifting no revelation no access the Lord has gathered us here again for this last time that we will receive something I have seen people in my life who are carriers of this grace especially our fathers of faith and every time I've had the honor to meet them I don't look at myself and say I'm Apostle Joshua Selman. I have revelations to miracles to this and that. I throw away all of that thing and I humble myself. I do not know enough. Let me learn. And with humility I receive. Can I tell you when it has to do with receiving impartation, it is not only men of God who have anointing. Mama who raised 11 children without begging, there is an anointing on her. Forget that she did not go to school. You will be foolish to imagine raising 11 stubborn boys and all of them became great. You think it's just by parental discipline? No. When mama fries Akara and that's what she used to pay the school fees of 11 children, I can tell you it was not just that thing she was frying. There had to be a grace. There are people who have never gotten a job yet you never ask them for money and yet they'll, and, and they'll be stranded. You who is working will come and meet them and say, please, can I get 100,000? They will enter their room and bring out 5, 5 naira, 10, 10 naira, 50, 50 naira until it matches the amount. There is a grace. So, I'm, I'm not, I'm only initiating the process for you. You must begin to discern people around your life. Some of you may need to call some of your loved ones and your parents now that you have them alive to say, mama, whatever grace was upon you that made you relocate from the village to the city and yet you did not die please here is a seed of honor release that grace upon me before you go to be with the Lord hallelujah when I started ministry even though God was already doing great things in my life I went and met my parents my biological parents even though I had received impartations and blessings from veterans in the gospel I went to them and I knelt down and I told them I said you are my parents among the many people who should bless me you should be it too I carried a seed of honor and said no it's not about big man I am this I don't care what the world is saying you see let me tell you we succeed because we are products of many anointings the blessings of many people is upon us are we together the blessings of many people Most of you who walk here have not been blessed by the privileges that come here. Some of us who are outside of this service have even been more blessed from this service than those who are walking here. You know that because those who are walking here have trivialized the people that God put there. It's true. 
There are some of you, even though you are working in the service, you will be surprised to get a passport, to get something can even be hard for you, even though you are working there. Because you have not tapped from the grace for ease that comes within that place. I have been greatly, greatly blessed, and I must say this, even on a note of thanks, from the time God connected me to NIS, right from the days in Kaduna, up until today, this is over a decade plus, I have enjoyed, there is no time I have come with a cry for assistance or whatever from the Nigerian Immigration Service that have not seen believers run round. No, I, I thank you. I have to say that. That the things that will take people days and weeks. I remember one time, my first, very, very first um, passport, they swapped my names. They took surname and put and all of that. And now to, it was affecting me and I said I didn't want anything so that it would affect me. And to do that was quite a complicated procedure. This and that. But I remember senior executives right from here rallied around and within, I think it was within minutes or so, they had done all of that. It was at the time when Hajj. So there were so many people. Everybody was frowning, just watching people with gallancy taking me from one office to the other. I said it's not my fault. It's called honor. But let me tell you this. Some of you, you are seated here right now and you have insulted some of the people already. You will change your passport or your passport will expire. You must learn to honor people so that the day that you need help, there will be a memory of your communication for honor. Listen, this is wisdom God is giving you. Are we together? Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this place Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this flame Listen, I can trace moments in my life when I encountered several dimensions of the anointing. And I can tell you what those anointings have produced in the life of this man. When your coordinator was introducing me yesterday and today, he said a lot of wonderful and gracious things and I appreciate it so much. I've enjoyed so much honor from NIS and even from many if not all of you who are seated here let me tell you the secret it's not because of anything we have the bible clearly says our sufficiency is not in ourselves it is of that God who has called us and made us able the word able means empowered empowered ministers of the spirit and not of the letter for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life there are some of you here who are in ministry you must desire this impartation right now. There are some of you who are in business financially. Things are down. There are some of you sicknesses and infirmities. Eating up your body and all of that. I know that we've stretched our time. It's going to be a few minutes and it's going to be a quick walk. Now here's what will happen. We'll do three or four things in succession very, very quickly. Number one is that I'm going to pray for this oil. I know that I saw a few people requesting that they have their own bottles of oil. So don't worry. I'll speak over it right where you are. Now we're going to pray for this oil. 
I don't know if there are jars or there are plates, but if we do not have it, oh dear, we have only one. Do we have a number? Okay. Please let me know when we have it so that we would position people, maybe one or two in, and then the various overflows so that we would redeem time. We'll do that very fast, and then I'll speak over your life. But are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. There are three prayer points that I'm going to give to us very quickly. Prayer point number one. Lord, I desire to live for you and to serve you all the days of my life. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I desire. I desire. Someone is praying. There is no need for empowerment when your heart is not inclined to serving or living for Jesus. Outside, are you praying? I desire in the name of Jesus Christ that my life will advance the purposes of the kingdom in NIS in my family, my home in my church, ministry someone is praying, someone is praying, someone is praying Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Father, the mantle and the grace that must come upon my life for the next level of my spiritual efficiency. Lord, let it land upon me. Someone pray. Pray. The anointing, the grace. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Are you declaring? Even by the Spirit. Lord, the grace I need. The mantle, the oil that must come upon my head and come upon my destiny. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. These Egyptians that I see today that have mocked the grace of God upon my life by the power that raised Christ from the dead and by the anointing, they must be scattered. Someone lift your voice and begin to pray. Egyptians of sicknesses. Egyptians of shame, disappointment, retrogression. Someone pray. Don't be distracted. For in Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Fire is falling in this place. Listen. Guess what I want you to do. Now. Um the men and women of God we are going to have someone stand here we are going to have someone stand here we are going to have at least one person outside, I don't know how many overflows but at least just one person there here's what we'll do, please let us conserve time, you are just going to leave your seat, just walk out so maybe we have to make way, I don't know if you are coming from here or there ushers just regulate us, so what will happen is pour some of the oil 
you just touch this on your head a symbol of your glory on your hand a symbol of your productivity you go back and you open fire you begin to pray are we together but thou O oh Lord and a shield from me my glory is blessed in Jesus name please stand But thou, O oh Lord, art still for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. O oh Lord, if you are coming from this side, this way, the oil is right there. If you are coming this side, the oil is this way. But thou, O oh Lord, thou, O oh Lord. Thou, O oh Lord, Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, You lift my head. But Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, Thou lift the rock of my head. But Thou, O oh Lord, Shield from me, from me, my glory, you lift my Please just come very quickly. If you are coming from this side, here's your way. If you are coming from this side, very quickly. Make sure you are praying. The oil on your head, the oil on your hands, and you begin to pray. Someone is praying. It's a new season by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare. Man de A man of God is praying. A prophet is praying. A pastor is praying. A businessman is praying by the power of the Holy Ghost. Help those under the anointing. But thou, O oh Lord,
Believers pray, something is upon you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Listen. The anointing is transferable. Believe me when I tell you. You can carry something in your life today. That you did not come with. Hallelujah. Now as I speak over your life. It's going to be fast. We just have a few minutes. I don't intend to keep you longer than necessary. But impartation is not a Pentecostal jamboree. Unfortunately, it has been abused again. But when you understand the spirit of impartation, it is someone carrying something from God through a vessel that is required for the next level of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, very quickly, whether you are inside or outside, I want you to be sensitive as I minister right now. Anyone under the anointing, please, I want you to bring them out as I just minister. So I'd like you to be sensitive. Whether you are an usher or not, please be your brother's keeper as you receive. Hallelujah. Be your brother's keeper as you receive. In the name of Jesus. I want to release the grace for speed. I, ha I know that there is such a grace for speed. And please, I want you to bring those under the anointing right now because I'm going to pray. Some of you, your entire families, your life, there has been all kinds of delays, unnecessary delays. Right now in Jesus' name, Shani Skabaroziata. Father, I am praying right now. Everyone who has been a victim of delay, delays of all sorts, my God, by that fire from heaven, may that grace rest upon you now. Please bring them out, bring them out, help them. Take that grace now. Take that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare. Bring them out. That grace for speed. Outside, inside. Receive it right now. Help this lady please. I declare that fire. May that mantle. That makes for speed. I release you right now. Every plague of witchcraft. That has tied you. Mates katikata. Ebreketebatia and kept you in the same position by the mantle of the prophetic by the mantle of the apostolic i release you now 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 now i'm praying I'm seeing fire come on people's hands. The works of your hands. There has been an attack over the works of your hands. But by this anointing, the Lord is setting you free. At the count of three, that grace is coming. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Help them. Bring them out. Take that fire right now. Take that fire right now. The works of your hands. I bless the works of your hands. Go and prosper. Go and succeed. Go and prosper. Go and succeed. Go and prosper. Go and succeed. Go and prosper. Malege shalakatebeketes. Don't be distracted. Something from heaven is coming upon you. Now hear me. Any spirit that is roaming around any destiny here. I'm about to minister deliverance right now. Every altar that is fighting everyone at the count of three, shout Jesus and that fire comes upon you. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cast that spirit out of their destinies now. Help that woman please. My God. Freedom from causes. Freedom from yokes. Freedom from orchestrations of ancestry. Please help them. I 
command that spirit go 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 right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah now hear me please this grace for favor I spoke about is about to come on everyone this one is not a few people I want you to receive it that mantle will change your life believe me father I'm praying right now upon everyone here inside the abate shalikata Lord let that favor grace at the count of three may it locate your people and turn their lives around are you ready now one two three take that grace take that grace for favor favor in the morning favor in the afternoon favor in the evening receive it receive it receive it receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace that mantle of favor help this woman please someone help that woman hear me anyone who has been victimized in this nigerian immigration service i stand by the mantle of the prophetic and the apostolic between now and the next 90 days we correct that error now we correct that error now anyone who has started any project that has not come to completion it is the devil by the power that raised Christ from the dead receive the finishers anointing receive the finishers anointing the finishers anointing the finishers anointing in the name of Jesus Christ please help them anyone here who has been barren physically barren mentally barren spiritually barren i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the son of the living god be fruitful be fruitful fire is burning in this place in the name of Jesus Christ hear me I pray for every family represented here the plague of shame and reproach that is upon your life it comes to an end finally it it comes to an end finally comes to an end finally comes to an end finally hear me everyone here please hear me particularly for those who work here at the immigration service anyone who is due for promotion and yet you have been kept down either because of sentiments or religion in the name of Jesus by the God who called and anointed me we veto all sentiments and we establish your promotion we veto all sentiments and we establish your promotion anyone who is due for posting and has been victimized by the power of the holy spirit let the book of remembrance be open hallelujah now please lay your hands if you are trusting God for healing in any part of your body we're wrapping up fire is burning in this place if it's a part of your body you can touch please touch if it's a part of your body that you may not be comfortable touching just lay hands on your chest don't worry those under the anointing when they are fine they can stand up and go don't force them to stand there's a reason why we ask them to come 
This lady, God is visiting your family. This lady wearing a white sweater. There is such a supernatural work God is doing. God is, is, is removing the cause. There is a cause that God is taking away. Please lay your hands very quickly. I want to pray for you. A miracle is about to happen right now. I believe in miracles. I am a miracle myself. I know what it means to be afflicted and to be healed. Lay your hands now. I want you to agree with me as I pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The power of God, the healing anointing will begin to flow to people right now. But there's a lady who is going to shout a loud shout. Now honestly, sometimes I don't know. This has happened many times here. So by now you know. This is not just human acting. It is as we hear the spirit say. It is strange. A loud shout. The moment that happens. The power of God will begin to move here. Help that woman. It's even a woman. Not even a young lady. Now I can pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to believe. The spirit that is behind any and every infirmity. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I command that spirit to give way now. I'm telling you, all I'm seeing is just fire falling on people. That's what I'm seeing. I command that spirit to give way now. Give way now. Give way now. Help her. Give way now. Now I decree and declare be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Every blood condition, whether you are inside or outside, be healed in Jesus' name. Every growth in your body, I command that growth to disappear now. Heart conditions, be healed now. The Lord is showing me someone you have a problem of frequent urination the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ frequent urination be healed now there's someone you hear sounds in your ears like you know just you know like a, um, you know just something really very noisy even when you are not in a place of noise it's affected your hearing the power of God is touching you right now. Now, anybody with any blood-related issue, that means any sickness that is through the blood, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. Migraine headaches, be healed now. The issue of blood, be healed now. Barrenness of all sorts, be healed now conditions be healed now ulcers be healed now frequent treatment of malaria and typhoid month after month be healed now severe pains around the joints be healed now HIV be healed now there are two men here God is showing me you are already beginning to have traces of enlarged prostrate this happens when you go to ease yourself by the power that raised Christ from the dead we normalize your prostrate now in the name of Jesus please hear me anyone who has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise I stand by the God of heaven and I cancel that statement now Hear me, what you have struggled to achieve from January till now, Aparataskia, help her please, till now July, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I release grace upon you. Go and achieve it. Help them please. Go and achieve it. 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 Now, hear me please. I know that there's all kinds of threats 
in this country right now that you know all kinds of things even Abuja the FCT is threatened but we stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ over the FCT and over the boundary of the Nigerian immigration service no evil will penetrate your gate please agree no evil will penetrate your gate not kidnap not bomb blast not shooting no one will be a victim of this evil in the name of Jesus I may not know all the things that you need corrected from the top right to any level but whatever is going wrong in this place institutionally speaking especially that which fights the church in the name of Jesus we rearrange it now we rearrange it now and for everyone who is not part of the Nigerian immigration service but came here to grace this occasion with them in the name of Jesus may God call your destiny help us to come and rejoice with you may my God call your destiny help us to rejoice with you in the name of Jesus Christ now all those who are executives I know that a new election has, has, has happened right now but prophetically let me pray for you whether you are aware of it or not those who will take the helm of affair by the privilege of God's grace just a little less than a decade I have been a part of this great family and I've seen the remarkable things that God has done in the name of Jesus I pray for the escorts who are coming it will not fail in your hands please shout amen. amen it will not be it will not fail in your hands every conspiracy against this chapel and this church and the vision of the church upon the nis in the name of jesus it will fail amen. by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus amen. now if you if you came with any point of contact or your oil so that we don't have people you can just lift it quickly let me speak over it any point of contact if there's nothing don't worry you can just receive but any point of contact inside and outside I want to declare over it right now and declare a blessing over it in the name of Jesus every oil every medium whatever it is points of contact photos I see people lift it documents in the name that is above all names i call it anointed i call it blessed for those lifting up documents those documents will no longer be empty documents they carry the seal of favor for those lifting the photos of your loved ones i decree and declare in the name of jesus a divine visitation for them for those lifting bottles of oil water I decree and declare may they carry the power of God to bring healing deliverance restoration and breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ whether it is a medical report or whatever it is you are lifting in the name of Jesus I decree and declare find favor in the mighty name of Jesus amen and amen now please hear me just one last thought and then we're done we are living in times where the devil is plaguing the spiritual fire of many believers. Please hear this. Even those who were on fire before, the devil is attacking their spiritual fervency to bring them down. This will be my last decree over you. Please hear me. If all you do is receive breakthrough, receive lifting, receive promotion, and your relationship with Jesus, your prayer life, your word life is down, you did not get much praise the Lord we are living in times where there is no one leg in and one leg out you have to make a decision that I am for Jesus and I am for Jesus sincerely no playing games no one leg in. <laughs> and you are not just for Jesus with Jesus just for money or with Jesus just for promotion these things will come but let me tell you the truth your heart must be purified to ensure and insist that you love him no matter what happens can I pray that one prayer for you father for every backslider
for everyone who may not be as serious with spiritual things as should be for everyone whose prayer fire has gone down for everyone who the grace to fast is not there again for everyone who the passion for the house of god is no longer there for everyone who is surrounded by negative and wrong friends and associations that continue to plunge you into ways that are not of god i decree and declare fresh fire upon your altar fresh prayer prayer fire upon your altar i reignite your passion for the word of god i reignite your passion for the gathering of the saints in the name of jesus and by the power of the prophetic i edit your associations every association that is antichrist anti-kingdom and would destroy you may you be separated from them in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless nis may the lord bless the chapel may the lord bless the leadership may the lord bless everyone who names the name of christ that when next we meet in the name of jesus you will be at least 10 times better and if you allow me let me declare if the mark of death is on anyone if the devil is already planning that this will be your last conference in the name of jesus we cancel it right now for in jesus name we pray thank you so very much may the lord bless you and i love every one of you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashkana kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata bagotos koto brekete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.